Okay, now that we have all the pieces of our teddy bear uh, cut out, we're going to focus on step one, constructing the head of the teddy bear. <music> So you need these three pieces. These two pieces will form the cheeks and the sides of the bear's face. And then this piece right here that looks like a long tongue will form the center of the bear's uh, face. So thread your needle. You want to use a fairly skinny, small needle so that it goes through your fabric effortlessly without catching. If you use a thick needle, it'll make punch big holes in your in your cloth depending on the cloth that could ruin your uh, material and cause runners and just use a matching color thread I'm using gray thread because there's gray uh, color in this plaid I put my thread through the needle I brought it all the way back down to the end so that I'm actually sewing with two pieces of thread and I did an overhand knot like this and put a knot on the, the bottom. And then I'm just cutting a little tail, leave a little bit of extra thread after that. I transferred all of the pattern marks on there, all the circles and all the triangles with a very thin um, black marker. All these little triangles basically match up with the coordinating triangles on the other piece. So these two triangles along this little curve line here, uh, they should the two triangles should lay right on top of each other. So I want two triangles on this side and two triangles on that side. Everything should be matched up edge to edge. And the pattern shows a stitch line a quarter of an inch uh, below the edge all the way around each pattern piece. That's called your seam allowance. And that little dotted line is the line that you follow when you sew. So if you want, you could draw those additional little dotted lines exactly a quarter of an inch in if you need to that if you need to do that to kind of stay on track so that you don't sew uh, kind of strange flat areas. You want to be perfectly curve you want to repeat the same curve down below when you're stitching pin the piece together and I'm just going to start sewing and I'll show you the back stitch that is the kind of sewing stitch we're going to use it's a very strong sewing stitch and I'm just pinning the the part that we're sewing right now only that part this little curve here is the neck opening. We're not sewing that. We're not sewing along this big curve or this kind of convex area. We're leaving all of those parts alone. We're just sewing this little curve right here. When you sew, you always sew starting from the back, not the front. And I'm going uh, about a quarter of an inch in from the edge, the top edge, and I'm also a quarter of an inch in from the right side because of the the way that we do the back stitch I pull the thread out toward me that's the front and then I go to the right so I'm kind of going in a backwards direction that's why it's called a back stitch I go to the right really close to the edge just make sh making sure that I go through both layers of fabric so I'm going back or I'm going to the stitching to the right and then I am coming back through but not right where you know I originally came out I'm going to go one stitch length forward again so that I could take my needle when I do my second stitch and go back I go back to where the last stitch that I made ended put it right through the same hole and this time I'm going to show you something. Instead of pulling it all the way through and then poking the needle um, to the front, you could just keep the needle inside the cloth and kind of turn the tip of the needle and find where you need to come back out through the cloth. That should be one, there should be one stitch length space on the right side of this little uh, piece of thread that's pulling out and one stitch length 
to the left of it. And then you could pull your needle completely out towards you on the side that's uh, facing you. You could do the same step over and over again. Keep your stitches really small, like a quarter of an inch, uh, ideally one eighth of an inch. If the pin is um, creating kind of like, if it's catching on your thread, just take the uh, pin out if you've gone past that area. Keep your uh, stitches really small. Take the tip of your needle, put it into the same hole where the last stitch ended, and then come forward past the thread one stitch space. And just repeat that step. If your thread gets kind of tangled or something, just use the uh, tip of your needle to untangle a knot. If it gets twisted in any kind of weird way, it sometimes gets stuck so that you then you can pull your thread and make that nice little smooth stitch. Do it again. Put your needle into the spot where the last stitch ended. Then turn the, turn the tip of your needle to the left. Go past where the thread is coming out from the back of the work and go, go over about one stitch space. That's about one eighth of an inch and you're still keeping to about a quarter of an inch below the cut edge of the fabric. Um, you're definitely sewing below those little triangles, below the tips of those triangles that you copied. Those triangles which help you align the two pieces together that you are sewing right now. Okay, And you're just going to continue to sew until you get to the very end here and then we're, I'm going to tie off the thread. about two and a half to three inches of thread still left stop stop sewing and go to the base of where the thread is coming out of your work just pick up and just go through the first layer of fabric and just go under it a little bit near where the base of that thread is and make a little loop and then Put, your, put the uh, point of the needle through that loop and pull your thread. You've just made a knot using your sewing needle. Do that about two or three times just to make sure that that knot doesn't come out. I made a little loop here and I'm putting the tip of my sewing needle through the loop and I'm pulling. Now I made two knots and that's good enough for me and I cut my uh, thread off so I could put some more another big long long length of thread on my needle but I do not cut right near the knot I just leave a little bit of extra thread right here because I might accidentally cut through that knot if I'm not careful and then the piece will come apart now I have this um, needle threaded again and I don't use a piece of thread any longer than maybe 15 inches because uh, if I do that, there's more of a chance of the thread getting tangled anyway, and then I'll end up wasting thread in, in, anyway. So I kind of start maybe a, a stitch or two back just to make sure that if the previous knot came out that I can, I, I'm reinforcing that area by going over it again. So I went through the back of the thread of the material. I'm coming through the front. I'm going back to the right and then taking the tip of my needle and coming forward to the left one stitch space. This is called a back stitch. I can pull any pins out in the areas that I've already stitched. And it's really good to sew with small stitches. Small stitches are strong stitches. So I'm going to repeat that again. Small stitches are strong stitches. Big loose, big stitches are loose stitches. Big stitches are weak stitches. 
you can use big stitches to just temporarily hold something together but if you want to sew for real and this is kind of like a permanent thing your stitches to be permanent you need them to be small okay I'm at the end and I just want to just do maybe another stitch here and just make sure that it close up the end all the way to the end I don't want my edges to like you know come apart that's where things that are hand sewn or even machine sewn get um, start falling apart now I'm going to show you how to make a little knot again I just take the tip of the needle and go to where the thread is coming out of the of the work go to the base of the thread here and go under and just go through the first layer of the fabric so that the needle catches on some of the fabric and I make a little loop here uh -huh. and then I take the tip of my needle and I put put it through the loop and then pull and that kind of tightens the knot I do that two or three times to make sure that my sewing uh, does not come apart. So I did it a second time and I pull it, take my thumb and just kind of push that knot to, to the, to the uh, top of the fabric there, push it against the fabric, and then I cut. I don't cut right where the knot is, I cut about a quarter of an inch or two or an eighth of an inch away from the knot so I don't cut the knot accidentally and then I'm going to flip the piece over to the good side and you should not see any of the stitches when you do that when you open up the piece it should look like a little pair of wings those are the two cheeks of this teddy bear now what we're going to do is sew on the next piece which is this little piece this is the only one where it's a single piece and we're going to sew on the wrong side once again all the work is where all the sewing is on the wrong side and then you flip it inside out to the good side or right side out to the good side so here if you transferred all the marks on your pattern correctly you have a little dot in the middle at the top here and you align that with this seam right here and you're going to pin the right side of this little tongue shaped piece to the cheek pieces on the right and on the left and there are these triangles on the little cheek piece and this little head center piece that line up and that's to help aid you in lining up the two pieces of fabric correctly because this is curved and this also is like a concave curve and it, it looks kind of like they should not match up but that they do okay and this little mark in the middle at the top of this tongue shape piece matches up with this mid seam that we just sewed this piece is the neck hole so you should not be sewing that shut you should not be sewing anywhere else 